Welcome to Trader TV. I'm Dan Barnes. Since 2018, pension fund trustees have much greater visibility over trading and execution costs for the funds they oversee. However, execution is not always a simple affair. Today we're speaking with Ratchet Sharma, Investment Director at RPMI Railpen, and Carsten Just, Head of Fixed Income Trading at Nordea Asset Management. We're going to be discussing why execution is important to the trustee, how execution and investment work within the process, and then how a trustee can understand best execution. Carsten, Rajit, welcome to the show. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. We've seen research from Mercer, the investment consultancy, suggesting that anywhere between 15% to 59% of day-to-day investment decisions can fall within a, a trustee's remit. Rashid, what sort of interactions do you typically have with trustees and how much of that is around execution as well as investment? So I think that split probably has a lot to do with the way the governance of for, might work for a particular scheme. Yeah. In our setup, the investment team makes a lot of the day-to-day, if not all of the day-to-day investment decisions. And the dealing desk and the portfolio implementation team, uh, they work closely with individual portfolio managers to figure out what's the best way to execute transactions for those portfolios. Mm. We deal with them through our reporting and compliance functions. Okay. So that emphasizes the importance of getting the right data and both qualitative and quantitative information from the trading desk to the investment function and then on to the trustee, I suppose. Absolutely. When managing trading as part of the investment process, what measures are useful for you to assess execution quality? There's a multitude of reporting that we feed back into how we think about the trading process. For instance, we start trading Stock Connect China A shares. Typically, we bias our trading towards the close in, in other markets because that's a good liquidity point. Yeah. But actually, that's not a great thing to do in Chinese A shares because it's a retail driven market. The close is not such a big part of the trading day and its uh, volumes can be very volatile. And so we trade very differently in that market than we do elsewhere. The way we came about that is through regular review of our execution data, execution quality, participation levels, slippage versus relevant benchmarks. And when there are outliers, what might be driving that? You have to investigate that and think about where in the process you need to make a change. Mm. I totally agree. It's much more about the process than the numbers. Do we follow you know, strictly a uh, well-defined and optimized process rather than uh, having a look at, at certain numbers. I think we use numbers very much to tune our processes, to learn from it, and obviously for outright reporting and stuff. But the statistics themselves are so littered with issues. I think that's a good point. What level of data do you think is actually useful for a trustee compared to a head of trading, for example? I think if you take it to that level, figure out data that will prove your process. So how do you figure out that there's a process and it's followed by all traders. And that actually fits with the investment management style and approach that the firm has. That way you can gain confirmation that you are doing best execution, basically. The thing is that you know, whether you trade with little fewer or little uh, more counterparties, yeah. whether you trade at certain times, you can always do peer comparisons. But there are so many factors affecting these numbers, particularly in a, in a slightly shorter run, that the comparison risks being more noise than information, basically. Mm. I agree completely, actually. Any DCA or execution quality numbers need to be taken in the context of that of your transaction or the market environment at the time. And so it's much more beneficial for trustees to think about best execution in the same way they think about the overall asset management process and that you don't just rely on past returns. You think about the investment process, the culture of the organization, the people there, stability of teams, et cetera, et cetera, and whether that extends to the execution part of the investment process as well. So you would see pension fund trustees assessing best execution using both qualitative and quantitative measures? Yes, absolutely. Where execution analytics are complicated, Carsten, what can a trustee consider to assess them? I think there's a couple of venues. One thing is to take some of the complexity out and look at more overarching numbers and check for consistency. 
over time. So not the level, but more the change in numbers. For trustees, it's all about being not only compliant, but also have a very high faith in, in your investment managers and, and your the people you work with. So it's, it's basically trying to get the data that will support that trust and will meet your demand for like reporting. It's not an easy task. I would say one thing you can get is peer reporting, mm -hmm. and that will use near same basis for a meaningful subset, at least, of your trading. Ratchet, that point about peer reporting, is that something you're aware of and something that you use? We look at peer transaction costs, yes. But I think the context around a transaction is so important, and a lot of that context is lost in high-level peer reporting for you know, a large asset manager over a 12-month period. Looking at that number is not really informative. There are other explicit costs where peer reporting can help benchmark our levels with the rest of the industry, and we do that. But I think for trustees, kind of extended that qualitative versus quantitative aspect, I think the source of confidence in the process and the best execution process needs to come from the qualitative work. But I think it is entirely acceptable to think about large transactions or big transition, et cetera, and look at the actual numbers, realized numbers on execution quality for those. Because what you can do there is you can build in all of the context that transaction required, whether you know, it was the urgency or illiquidity, the duration of the trade, and what the appropriate benchmark is. So you can kind of build all of that into and then look at. So I would suggest you know, for trustees to think about the process and then on a one-off basis for important transactions, look at the execution quality numbers, but then look at those with all of the context that those numbers require. What advice would you give a pension fund trustee who wants to understand how execution is impacting their investments? Look for attribution on overall execution costs as a percentage of the portfolio. So for low turnover strategies, obviously execution should be much less important to portfolio outcomes than it is for high turnover strategies. And then if it's high turnover in what sort of instruments is it? Trading a managed future strategy, for instance, execution costs in themselves are not massive. But a high turnover equity portfolio can really you know, suck out all of the alpha in the portfolio. Guys, that's been great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Great talking to you. Thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure.